All right, so today I want to talk about using custom content in your pop-ups. So you've been able to do something like this for quite a while in your pop-up templates, right? You could add uh, custom content to return whatever it is you would like to return. Uh, but uh, a while ago, 416 they added a specific module to do this so that you could have different types of content in the same pop-up. You can have like the fields, you have charts, and then some custom content. Uh, media, so whatever. All right, so it's pretty self-explanatory. It is exactly what you expect it to do. You have a creator function, and it can return either a string, uh, HTML element, even a widget, and it could be asynchronous. So you could do some work behind the scene, query some data, pull up some other information, display a map view or 3D scene view in the pop-up. There's no limit there. Right, it's a pretty cool sample uh, in the SDK. So if I click on a pop-up here, I'm gonna get uh, some information in my pop-up, kind of like you expect. But I've also got a search widget in my pop-up. How crazy is that? Add a search widget directly in my pop-up. So you can do stuff like that. Maybe a directions widget might be a little too big for a pop-up, but who knows? You can do some cool stuff here. So let's try it out. So here I've got a data set of cities, and this particular data set has population information right so if i uh, run this uh, as is and i click on something i'm going to get a couple of things here and i'll explain what's happening in the code in a second here so i've got the population field and then hello so i have two types of content here in my pop-up template i have fields content which is going to be the default kind of tabular data you normally see in pop-ups and i'm only showing one field there's other fields in this data set but they have more to do with like age ranges and stuff i don't care uh, in this case, and then one that just says hello. That's my creator function here. So let's do something with the custom content. Let's say, for example, I click somewhere and I want to get weather information. So I can use the weather.gov API here. So the weather.gov API is pretty cool. Absolutely free, no API key needed. I mean, it might be rate limited depending on if your website is asking for a lot of data, but it's actually a pretty cool API to work with. So let's check that out. So the first thing I'm going to need in my custom content here is I'm going to need to pull some information from the graphics. So let's make this a little bit bigger. Might be a little bit too big. <laughs> we'll find out right now. Um, so let's get some information off of the uh, geometry of my graphic. Oops. Graphic.geometry. And I want the latitude and the longitude. Okay, so let me get a little bit of copy paste magic here. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, make a request to weather.gov. This is their endpoint you can use if you want to use lat longs. Just pass latitude and longitude in that order. Don't mix them up, right? You get some weird stuff. Um, no response at all. Uh, I should also mention too that they're not all locations are gonna give me weather information. I do get some null results sometimes. And I, I think it's just based on the way that the grids are set up and stuff like that. And I haven't tried displaying the grids yet. Um, but there's other cool things you can do with this besides what I'm going to do. And I'll talk about that in a second. So let's take my response. So let me get the results from here. So results await uh, response.json. And let's log these out just so you can kind of see what we're working with here. All right, let's grab that up. Give me some more room here. Let's run this. Let me just kind of click anywhere at all. Should definitely get a response down here. Okay, here we go. So let's check this out. So you're going to get back a, a GeoJSON of data. And of course, it has some extended uh, properties on here. Um, but basically, I've got my geometry. So that's the point that I'm asking for information from. And the properties is going to give me some more information. So in the properties, we get information about the county. So uh, for different zones, and we have these different forecast information, the fire, weather zone, the forecast, forecast, good grid data, the hourly forecast. I don't know what offices are. I think this is kind of cool. Um, might want to play with this at some point. Uh, and observation stations. So maybe I want to get all the grid points uh, for somewhere. But in this case here, for the forecast, you can see here, it gives me the um, the CWA, which I'm, 
I'm honestly sorry, I don't know what CWA is, but it's going to automatically add my grid information to the URL in the forecast for me. So if I expand that a little bit here, yeah, so it's going to the forecast endpoint. So I want to grab this forecast property off of my results. Okay, let's do that then. Get rid of that. So let's go ahead and say that const like spell is going to be equal to uh, results dot properties. I want the forecast property or cast. There we go. And at this point, now what I want to do is make another fetch request. So we're going to call this the, it's called forecast response. It's going to be equal to await fetch forecast. Now let's grab the data from here. Const data is equal to await forecast, no, forecast response dot JSON. Boom. Okay, so now we got some data sets here. Uh, let's log this out just so we can see what we got. Clear this up. And where's my run button? I had a run button. There we go. Run it again. Give me some more room here. Zoom in a bit more. Let's get one for this point here. So Temple City. Okay, we got some results here. Okay, so let's look at the properties for this one. So it's going to go ahead, gives me this forecast generator, generated at. So you have a timestamp for when uh, you got this particular forecast, units, and then we've got this periods right here. And this is actually my forecast information. So this afternoon, tonight, Wednesday, and so on and so forth. I've got two weeks worth of forecast information I can work with to display my pop up. Now I can limit it to the next five days or well. It's not two weeks, I'm sorry. It is a week's worth of forecast information, but they break it up into uh, day and night, right? So all the way up to uh, this afternoon, tonight, and then tomorrow, tomorrow night. So it's one week worth of data, but day and night forecast information. So let's go ahead now. We know we're going to look at this periods array, so we know what we're working with here. All right, give me some more room. Get rid of that console there. Okay, so I want to create an element that I'm going to return back to display my information for me. So let's do this document dot create element. Right? Yeah. Uh, I, don't know, I can't, can't spell for a second there. Yeah. Okay. So um, I'm going to create this fragment and it's really not eh, fragments, probably a bad name for this, but I don't care. It's not going to be a document fragment, but it's going to be a, it's going to be a string that I append my results to. Right? So make this h3 like so and we call this weather forecast oh gosh come on i could spell eventually great okay so now let's go and loop over that um now my return is not going to be hello anymore i'm going to return the element and i'm going to say here is i'm going to say the element dot inner html is equal to my fragment all right which is again it's not really a document fragment just text and i'm creating dom stuff here so yeah uh okay so i can do this now uh run it and click on stuff and it's just going to return back um stuff it's coming out here let's click on la of course the biggie right here and it's just going to return back weather forecast so let's populate the weather forecast so for um let a of periods because this is an array that I want to grab stuff off of. Now, please excuse me while I do a little copy paste magic because this is way too much typing uh, for me. So I have my fragment and the data I get from the uh, the periods array, the forecast information. You're getting an icon, which is going to give you um, the icon will coincide with the weather forecast, and you'll see that in a moment here. Um, we get the name and we get the short forecast. The name's gonna be the day. So it's be like Wednesday or Wednesday night. The short forecast could be like sunny, windy, rainy, uh, stuff like that. And then the temperature and the temperature units, which I think by default are going to be Fahrenheit. I don't know if the API supports getting Celsius, but you can convert this yourself. And then we get the wind speed and the wind direction that we can use. So, okay, let's save that. Let's run this and let's see what we get.
Oh, I got an error here. For the, oh, the A up here. It's my bad. Okay. Save, run, do it again. Error is gone, and we're good to go. Okay, let's try this one more time. Don't know exactly where my typo was, but it was in there somewhere. Probably in the document or something like that. Uh, and I didn't bother looking at errors, so let's try Los Angeles. And here we go. So here's our weather forecast. See what I meant by the icon representing what is the forecast, right? So this afternoon in LA, it's going to be sunny. Temperature is 74 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's going to have a wind speed of 5 to 10 miles per hour southwest. And we have uh, night time. I don't know, these icons come out a little weird sometimes. So tonight, patchy fog. Um, patchy fog, then mostly sunny. Is that the icon for patchy fog, the most sunny? Maybe it is. I don't know that. Patchy fog, patchy fog. Okay, let's get out of LA. It's pretty foggy over in LA. What's Anaheim going to look like? All right, so sunny this afternoon. Patchy fog, patchy fog. So, so I guess this is the icon for patchy fog. I thought it was just uh, the icons were broken. So, okay, so we got some patchy fog going on. All right, so that's probably all the whole area here. It's come out here. It's come to Rancho. Sunny. Mostly clear, so we have uh, the moon. Mostly clear, so it's not totally clear, so a little bit of clouds in there. Same goes for here. And, you know, it's pretty cool. So, yeah, I didn't make this pretty. <laughs> you can make this as pretty as you want. You can make it your own uh, custom web component to display weather information inside your pop-ups if that's something that you want to do. And you'll be good to go. So, like I said, you can pretty much put whatever you want inside these custom pop-ups. One cool thing I was thinking about doing is, is I have uh, population data with all the different age ranges, stuff like that, is adding my own, pretty own chart, but then the API can kind of do chart stuff for you. But maybe I've got um, more detailed population data for like the past 20, 30, 50 years or something like that for that particular feature I click on. And now I want to create like my own custom kind of like scatter chart with funky animations and maybe some other kind of analysis just for that particular feature for this data set. And then maybe compare it to some other features that are around where I'm at. And you can do all that inside the custom content for your pop-up and display that little analysis right there in the pop-up itself, which is really powerful stuff. That's really cool. So the only limitation to what you can put in here is what it is you want to do, right? Uh, I even had a video and a blog post on how to put use React portals to add React components into your pop-up. So you can use that here if that's something you want to do as well. So there's a lot that you could do, right? It's uh, just up to you and your imagination and what it is that your needs are. So try it out. Um, now, if you have any questions, please let me know. As usual, uh, leave a comment. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe the video. Thanks a lot. And I'll see you next time. I just want to let you know that I've started a new podcast called The Bounding Box, where I'll be talking about geo development, web development, and everything in between. You can find it on Apple Podcasts, on Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and plenty of other places that you can find podcasts. Um, there are a few episodes available now. We are in a bi-weekly schedule, so every other week I'll be having guests on um, talking about various topics. So please tune in, please subscribe, and let me know what you think. Thank you.